Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I'm so glad you're joining me again today. In today's video I am going to create a very simple but very adorable little scene using some products from Mama Elephant. I'll also be going more in depth in how to color light and dark in watercolor and in this case some ink blending. So I'm using the Dandelion Wishes stamp set from Mama Elephant and I'm only using one stem from that. I stamped that out in Ink on 3 Fade Out Ink onto a panel I die cut. Um, it's Kenson Moval 200 GSM watercolor paper and I die cut it with the Deco Oval Frame die also by Mama Elephant. I will be doing some ink blending as well, so I'm creating a simple mask by stamping the image onto a full stick post-it note. I'm fussy cutting it out, but it doesn't have to be precise. I'll also show you a little tip on how to fix any masking mistakes at the end. Which I think is very useful, since I personally make a lot of masking mistakes, especially when doing no-line coloring. To paint this little bunny, I am using the Magello Mission Gold watercolor palette and a very fine paintbrush by Da Vinci. I think this is the number two of their Kowinski line. As always when coloring, I am working in layers and in sections. So I'll first cover the entire bunny with a very light wash of watercolor paint. I'm just using a warm brown here. And I'm showing you the first layer in real time. Uh, I'm speeding up all the rest of the coloring process, but I wanted to show you how slow I really color. And even though this first layer of paint is mostly going to be a flat wash, there's not going to be a whole lot of color variation, I am using it to figure out the placement of my shadows. Everywhere where I am putting down the paint directly, so what I just did, um, that's going to be the darkest areas of the bunny. Now I am blending that out just a little bit with some clean water. Again, in this first layer, there's not going to be much difference between the light and the dark areas, but that's exactly why I work in layers. I'm almost treating this first layer, this base layer, as a shadow study. Um, some people do them in a separate notebook and it's very useful but I don't have the patience to do that and I don't have the planning skills to do that so this is my alternative. I do a very light shadow study in the color that I'm using already so it saves me some time, it adds a base layer and I have some time to figure out how I'm going to color this bunny. Now, this first layer is completely dry before I start painting the second layer. I cut out all the drying time in this video, but it's very important that you dry your first layer or any layer you do before you move on to the next. You will reactivate the paint anyway, but it'll be a lot cleaner if you do it when it's completely dry. For each layer, I'm also stepping up the intensity of the color. Of course, this is easy to do when working with markers or colored pencils. You just take the next darkest shade available to you, right? For watercolor, it involves some mixing. There are a couple of different methods to do this. I think I actually use the worst one, but I'm just so used to it that I keep using it. Personally, I like to start out by mixing the lightest shade first. And whenever I'm ready to move on to the next layer, I intensify the color I had with more pigment. You can also just mix all your different shades before you start. So you have a light, a medium, a dark, maybe some in-between shades as well. But as you might have guessed, that's way too much planning for me. I think the professional or correct way to do this is to actually mix your darkest shade first. If you make your darkest shade and you make enough of it, you can take a little bit off to the side and dilute it. 
Um, you can do that in steps. So you just work back from the darkest shade and then you add a lot of water for the lightest shade and just a little bit less water for the medium shade. That way you can make sure all your color values are correct and especially if you have a really complex color that you made with a lot of different paints, this can be very useful. I just never bothered to do it before and I'm so used to this by now that I can't see myself switching. You can see it in the video, but I just wanted to note it one more time. I am working in sections for this bunny. The shading is a little bit complex with the neck and the head and the ear. So I am painting the body separate from the head, even though there is no line separating them. And it didn't happen this time for me, but sometimes that can result in a very harsh line that you maybe didn't want. So that's not ideal, of course, but I still think this is the best way to work. And, and there are ways to fix that harsh line if you have it. Again, it didn't happen for me this time, um, but I'm going to tell you anyway how to solve it. If you have that harsh line, just mix a very light wash of the same color you used, even lighter than your lightest, lightest shade. Use more water than paint. And paint a flat wash, so paint a very even layer over the entire image. This will even out any harsh lines that you had in previous layers. Just make sure that your brush isn't too wet. I always, when I wet my brush, first dab it off onto a cloth before I bring it to my paper. Okay, now for the light. I want this dandelion to glow. And when you have one of those glowing elements in your scene, especially when you have a dark scene like I will, you would expect to see that light reflected or cast onto the bunny. And with a yellow light, that means that the bunny will be slightly tinted yellow in the lightest areas. And the good news is that when working with watercolor, you can very easily add this. You just add another layer of yellow paint over the, the lightest areas and don't blend it all the way over to the darkest. You could even intensify this effect with colored pencil, but I find that sometimes takes away too much of the layers underneath, of the color underneath. Okay, onto the background. I chose to ink blend this because I find it slightly faster and more even. And I find the masking method of just cutting out the image of a post-it note more reliable than masking liquid. But if you do want to paint the background as well, um, you need some masking liquid for that bunny. That's basically some liquid rubber that you paint on. It will ruin your paintbrushes, so <laughs> make sure you have a paintbrush just for that purpose. Um, and it can pull up your paper. I don't have <laughs> great experiences with masking liquid. I probably just had bad masking liquid. Um, but yeah, that's an option if you want to paint this entire scene instead of ink blend it. Anyway, back to the things I'm actually doing. So I'm ink blending this with mostly Pinkfresh Studio inks, but I'll bring in some other inks at the end as well. All of the inks, all of the colors will be listed in the supply list in the description below. I start out with a simple yellow glow right around the light object, and then I bring in some blue. Of course, I start with light blue and work my way up. Um, but the most important thing is to not bring in that light blue, that initial blue you use, too much over the yellow because you will create green and that's not what actually happens when there's a light in the night sky. So usually when you ink blend you want to overlap the colors to get a nice smooth blend. Don't do that for the yellow this time. Just blend in close but you don't have to uh, blend over it. I'm also making sure that the area right behind the bunny is dark. Even though on the other side of the light object, the dandelion, the blue doesn't immediately go that dark so close to the light source, 
the bunny is blocking the light. So make sure you keep that in mind when working with the light source, you will also have shadows. I'm bringing in some purple around the edges to deepen up the blue and then I'm going straight for the black. This is the first fine pigment ink. Um, it's the Versafine Onyx Black. I really like the crisp black. I use it for stamping all the time. And I recently started using it for ink blending as well for night skies and it works out perfectly. As you can see, I'm peeling off the mask and I just wanted to say that I also blended black uh, all over the floor where the bunny is standing on. I'm imagining it as a grassy hill. And to fix my masking mistakes, I'm first using a black fine liner, but for my masking mistakes near the yellow and the light blue, I will use colored pencils. I'm tracing over the dandelion with a white gel pen and then adding some dots into a stream up. Um, I'm imagining them as more glowing dandelion seeds. To give the impression of grass, I am adding some blades of grass with a white gel pen, which would be highlighted by the dandelion. Now I'm going to use my colored pencils to deepen up the shadows of the bunny. I thought the contrast between the black of the night sky and the bunny was too big. I wanted the shadows on the bunny to be darker. So I'm just doing that with a variety of my Polychromos colored pencils by Faber-Castell. I'm working from dark to light here, which I always do when coloring. And I am not being precise because I think the strokes of the colored pencils are a great way to imitate the fur. To make those dots appear slightly more like glowing elements than just dots, I am adding a circle around them with white gel pen and just dabbing it up with my finger so it's not as intense as the dot in the middle. I used the same die as before to die cut this frame from a shimmery dark blue cardstock and I'm gluing that onto my top folding white card base. I am propping the inside panel up on some foam tape, but that would make the white of the card base show through a little bit on the sides. So that's why I added that black marker around the inside of the frame. I'm adding two layers of foam tape for some extra dimension and I'm adding it all over so it doesn't sag in the mail. Because there's nothing as sad as a saggy card. I'm just lining that up and adhering that down and that finishes up the card. As always, I'm creating a quick matching envelope as well. I'm using black cardstock and following the instructions on my We Are Memory Keepers 123 punch board. But the punch doesn't deal well with a thin cardstock, so that's why I'm cutting off the areas where it punched badly through the paper. I'm reinforcing the folds with my bone folder, but not adhering or assembling the envelope quite yet. I first want to stamp some of the dandelions onto the back of the envelope. I'm prepping the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and stamping the flowers in Versamark ink. And then I'm embossing it with WOW Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder. I use the anti-static powder tool for people who don't know. Um, to make sure that the embossing powder doesn't cling to the paper anywhere where I didn't put any ink. I heat set the images and then I'm using a white gel pen to create those same glowing dot details on the envelope as I did on the card. And that finishes up the card and matching envelope for today. I love how this little scene turned out. I also really like the matching envelope this time. I hope you liked the video as well. If you did, make sure to leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. You can find a full list of supplies in the description below. You can also find a link to my Instagram and my blog where you can find any previous cards I made before I had a YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.